One, two, three. All of a sudden, you awake to hear a DM who is glad to say it's finally time for Digimon and Dragons. I am the Lord of Clowns himself, the perverted lord of stupidity himself, Game and King. I am your DM, much to everyone else's weirdness, confusion, and dismay. Here, my yeah, victim... Else. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one here in this classroom. Shush, child. <laughs> now, to introduce my victim, I mean player, of probably what I mean, should have been... Back. Get to me. <laughs> the player to honestly who I must right now start with a thank you for putting herself through this and offering herself up as ritual sacrifice I mean as player meet Smab everybody I thought we were going out to boss scones today no that's next year <laughs> oh but yes, hello. I am the YouTuber of Channel Smab. Now, I'm going to get real quickly just a couple of the rules out of the way for in case anyone who sees this and realizes it's nowhere near as cringy as it should have been. In case they kind of get in their minds that they want to, you know, consider playing it. The rules are very short, sweet, and simple. A lot of it is just using D&D 5E, mostly because too many of the other D&D games that are out there are either overly complicated or are using dark, Blades in the Dark as their methodology. I wanted something a little more simple and jump inable with a lot more simplicity to it. So, consider that laziness. <laughs> but, the rules are basically short and simple. If you say that your typing is only a specific element, then that means stuff like Fireball is going to be whatever that element you've chosen is. So, Lightning Ball, Ice, so on. Um, when it comes down to, did you Digimon, Digivolutions, there's no real limitation. You can either play as a pre-existing Digimon, or you can just say, screw it, and pull a Kato and make your own. Like me! Like our dear little Plasmon here. Hello! Now, I am going to tell you that you don't necessarily have to have artwork or something like that. Smab's just an overachiever. I still haven't done everything that I need to do yet, though. And thank God she has about four levels to do some stuff. Yay! I have like maybe eight sessions, possibly, or more. Yeah! Oh, my butt! Now, I am going to tell the EXP methodology here in case anyone's curious on what it is. It is twofold. Yes, you heard me right. Twofold. It is using a little bit of the EXP from, you know, Kills, but it's also primarily using Milestone. Now, ultimately, um, when it comes down to if you want to show up, you know, be a player after this, that's perfectly fine. Just hit me up either in comments or if you're someone who knows me on Discord, you can also hit me up that way. Or if you happen to know Smab in some way, you can hit up Smab. So, either of those methods work. And if you hit up me, I'll just send you to him. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Time to get to it. Are you ready, my dear victim? I mean, player. I'm meeting Nudo. Yay. I'm going to take that as ready. Here we go. As you awaken, you feel like you've had not only a strange dream, but feel like borderline a hallucination. But ultimately, that leaves your mind when the almost salty sweet air just seems to brush past your flesh which is convenient because a moment ago you felt a little warm and it seems to ease do you awaken I think I'm going to get just like five more minutes. <laughs> you begin to rest more. Maybe it's the sounds 
of animals in the distance or the comforting breeze and warmth from the sun. But those five minutes are probably the best sleep you feel you've ever had. As you awaken, what you see before you is not what you expected. In front of you, you see on one end what looks like a giant ocean stretching far beyond the horizon. You feel sand beneath you, warm, soft, gentle, unlike any sand you've ever seen, ever experienced. Like this is like the 10 star Michelin of sand. It's very fine. Very, very fine. Very warm. It's not like like it burns flesh. It's just this comforting warmth, almost like a warm blanket during winter. Now, as you look around, you can't help but notice that on what was in front of you was an ocean. But strangely, behind you is this giant forest and oasis. It's trees bouncing back and forth between being that of palm to some cactuses to what you would see in the Amazon even. A little off to the right you see what looks like a town amidst a mass of palm trees. And the only reason you could tell is because of how much it's shining from here. To the left you see this giant forest seem to only grow bigger and more massive and more unrelenting. Off in the distance right between though you see a strange structure. You're not entirely sure what it is but you do have this nagging feeling like it should be familiar-ish in some way. But the big question is, do you look down at all? I don't think I would yet. Hmm. I'm just amazed by my surroundings, considering... <laughs> It's an amazing, fair, spectacular, interesting. I would like for you to roll me a flat d20. Very well. Mm. So as you are, let's put it kindly here, awestruck by the scene you're surrounded by, you can't help but get like a nagging sensation like something's not right here. At first it's slow, but then it dawns on you. There is nowhere in all of Earth like this place. Not a single place on Earth is like this. And that's when you started to notice something off with yourself. You notice, you don't need to look. You don't need to. You notice you are no longer a woman. I'm a lot shorter than I was before. Oh yes. So much so. You also know, can't help but notice that whenever you move your toes, there are claws digging into stuff. And that's when it slowly creeps in that I should probably go look in the water and look at my reflection. Do you do so, though? I'm going to do that, yeah. Also, being a desert, would probably be nice to get a drink. <laughs> yes, yes. So, as you look into the water, you don't see your face. You see a creature with spiky-ass hair, a third eyeball, In the forehead, might I add. Going the wrong way for how an eye is supposed to work. 
and then you hear it. It is not from the outside. You are very uncomfortably aware of this. You can tell that this voice is coming from inside you. There you are. We are now as we should have been. With this said, you definitely get a drink. You're also half hoping that maybe if you drink this, you'll wake up. Very much hoping this is a hallucination right now. As you drink, you decide, eh, fuck it. This happens all the time in TV shows. You splash yourself with water. But, alas, you do not wake up. This must be one of them isamakais. Yes, yes, yes. Then... Wait, if it's an isamakai, that means I'm... I'm not gonna go... Not, I'm not gonna parse that yet. In, in your case, you get this nagging sensation, but it it's being a bit overshadowed, let's be honest here. You have this nagging sensation that you're not where you're supposed to be. But there's a far louder sense of, ooh, this place is actually interesting. Then you hear it. Heed my call. Do as I beckon. As you hear this voice, somewhere just in your gut, you you know that this thing is something important. What way it's important, you have no idea right now. But I will say this. You do feel like you're missing details. Like something's not quite syncing up in your head right. So I'd like to offer you this. Would you like to roll history? Or would you rather go forwards? I think I'll go forward. <clears throat> okay. So I got a mystery voice. I'm in a mystery place. Mystery body. Well, best time to do in situations is to find someone else. Mm. So, as you go forward, you do come to a point of where it's time to choose what direction. Go into the heavy-ass forest, go to the weird random structure, go to town. Basically, this is the part where I get to use the favorite DM line of many DMs. What you do? Uh, let's see if I go to town. I don't know what kind of place I'm at. If I'm different than anyone else, then there's trouble. But if I go to the forest, there might be things for me to survive on. But if I go to the third, I, I don't know. Uh, forest. I'll head to the forest. Okay. You head into the forest. It is massive and thick. Like 90 seas later, it is borderline impossible to see through anything. All you can say for certain is that there's going to be lots of trees and more trees. As you make your way there, you... It starts off with just light. You hear some slight noise. Nothing huge. Just a tink, tink, tink. As you get closer, though, it becomes louder. And louder. The noise isn't necessarily deafening, but you can tell that whatever it is, it is not just tink and done. It is... Tink 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 
Upon hearing the sound, you can easily tell that it's some kind of metal. Basically, bouncing off of other metals. Do you go to it? Or what you do, really, as a whole? I'll go close to see what it is, but try to not be seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, roll me a stealth. Uh -huh. nice so, shot. nice shot, by the way. Um, as you're kind of making your way quack, quiet, effective, you manage to get, let's be honest here, pretty good view, pretty close. You're able to find a kind of a, a tree at just the right angle to hide behind. And what you see is... At first, you're convinced they're just creatures, other monstrosities. But, then you hear this. Goblimon, rookie level Digimon. It is renowned for its cunning and cowardice. It prefers to hunt in packs if, mind you, fight directly at all. It will primarily try to use trickery, deceit, Further information not found. And it just kind of goes silent. Is Eerily so all of a sudden. That was heard inside you. Oh my. <laughs> um, it did kind of say one thing that kind of nags at you though. And doesn't sound right. It it says it's primarily a. Did you? It says it hunts in packs, and yet you only see one. Where's the pack? May I try to percept around? Yes, you may. By all means, percept. Ouch! Hey. <clears throat> Here's what I'll give you. Um. You don't really know where they went off to, but what you're confident is is that there's a lot of gold here. Tons. It Some of the gold stretches almost all the way up to the treetops, even. Some gold is big enough to the point of it can act as cove, hiding. Some of it is so large that you kind of just can't help but laugh at the insanity of it. And others are big enough to the point where it's like, ooh, that's quite a lot. Um, you do see the one, but you can kind of tell that he's primarily there to keep track of all the gold and primarily keep it safe. Um, he's clearly seeming impatient and seems like he's waiting. I'll give you that much. Alright. <clears throat> From the tree, I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna have you do one more roll, though. Okay. I'm gonna have you do one more roll. Perception. Go. I just rolled that one. Yeah, I'm gonna have you roll again, actually. Not because of advantage or anything like that, for a different reason. Okay. Wow. Same number. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, I didn't think you get the same number, honestly. But okay. Uh, basically, you do notice that they seem to have specific paths within the gold. And you also can't help but notice that there is a specific path winding past the uh, Gerberimon in front of you. Uh, you kind of have a couple of guesses where that path could be just snaking towards, but you, you aren't sure. Now, what do you do? Uh, stick to the course that I was about to. You're going to keep being in the forest? Tree. From behind my tree, I'm going to just say, um, hello? I seem to be lost. Any what? chance I can get any help? 
you see it pick up a club. Oh no. Intruder! Intruder! Oh wait, I'm the only one here. I'm... Fuck. I walk out, hands up. Can I really be an intruder if I'm not intruding? Yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a persuasion roll, my dude. I feel like that's a shit one, so it's probably this head. Yeah. That one. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm need you. Smart ass. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to make a saving throw of the dex variety. Oh, that one. Okay. Uh, back to back. Two hold on, I didn't think we'd be back. at this. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, no. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Well, I mean, we're we'll like see. Sent to Egg Village. <laughs> we, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh dear god. Okay. Not I one. Have a one in persuasion and a two in dex. Oh, for Christ's sake. Okay, ready? My priorities are strength and con. Okay. Good news! <laughs> no whammies yet. But he does do a grand total of four damage. Oh. It's a very good thing you're only fighting one. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you do f he does four damage to you. Now, in doing so, I think it would be very apparent that uh, you probably won't be able to talk your way out of this. Or at least, oh, you can try, but I, as your DM, be afraid. Because <laughs> now, um, with this, I, you're probably going to have disadvantage on any attempt to persuade him to stand down now? Well, as all great protagonists do! 19! Okay. That definitely hits. 5 damage. Okay, a really good start. And then I'm gonna bonus action, bonus action my second wind. Mm. And get my health back. Up cool! Up. That is my one use until long rest. Oof. Yeah. And what's your AC? Uh, 18! Oh, good! Thank the Lord. So he swings and misses. <laughs> this armor on my body for nothing. Yeah. It's also gonna use second wind, though. If I remember correctly, second wind is a d4. It is a 1d10 oh. plus your fighter level. Oh. It's far more than I thought. Unfortunate. Oh dear god! Being proper. It has all its health back. Your turn now. And that is the bonus action, by the way. Uh huh. So sure. they chose not to take an action. No, you can do an action, then a bonus action. Oh no! Uh, you missed. No. Misses as well. Your turn again. All right. Punch. Ah. Oh. This is gonna go on for a bit till I get reinforcements, isn't it? We'll see. Ouch. Yeah, he missed. 18, let me Nice, go. yeah. Definitely hit. Six damage. Nice. I'm Ooh, he missed. I'm trying to knock him out, by the way, not kill him. Mmm, how this kind of you. Lethal. Very kind of you. Modified. 20. Nice. Seven damage. Locked to the gut. Yeah, he's out cold. I'm gonna run away and go to the town. Understandable. Very understandable. Uh, 
to put it kindly, no, I'm not going to make you roll for this. Because uh, you're probably pelting it as hard as you can. Very much so. So yeah, you get there pretty quick, like. And as you get there, you come to a realization. This place has been hit recently. You have a gut feeling like running as fast as you could here has saved your ass. You're not sure why, but you can't escape that feeling. But you can also tell like many of the people are very clearly scared. They are clearly recently scared even. Children are hiding being having their mouths covered by their parents scared out of their gourds. Do you announce yourself or are you just like uh, creeper your way in? My first thing is are these people people or like uh, the goblin on? You are not sure. All you can tell is that given the fact that you are not what you look like technically speaking you have no real way to know if these people are People like you I'm gonna or try and get a look at one of them. All you can tell for sure is that outwardly they appear to be Digimon. And then dear lord does something happen right as soon as you look at people. Oh. You get bombarded with info. You realize that as your eyes travel to each person, it's going to the next person and describing what they are. Oh, oh fuck. Ow, ow, headache, headache. It's ice cream brain. You start to realize, like, maybe I should look at them one, let it finish its bullshit, then go to the next. Or do the introvert thing and look at the ground and go to near the nearest one. And that uh, is an option if you'd like. So you're going to do that, go up to the closest possible one. Now look here, Sonny. Mm -hmm. We don't got anything else for you to take. So you go back to that a goblin on, and you tell him to kiss my old ass. Well, looking at the ground, um, uh, I think I. Hey, 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 hey! Uh, look at me when you talk to me, boy. Don't you sass me now. I'm 900 years old. You will show me some goddamn respect. I'm gonna look up slowly. You notice there's a, a weird delay for the voice thing before it was like bombarding you too hard and too heavy now all of a sudden it's like Digimon mega level Digimon also known as the grandfather Digimon it is an old Digimon that has much wisdom has seen much and yet knows more somehow Digimon are often advisors or guides sometimes to heroes and others to those who are simply salvation itself it is said that a Digimon is unrivaled in its wisdom and age. And it kind of just leave it kind of just leaves you with that like, oh, I guess this thing's not going to be a dick now. I immediately just give the rapid bow of apology. Now you see, youngsters, that's decency. That's some good decency. Has the gall and the balls to apologize when they do something wrong. They need more like them. Ugh. Where's my dentures? Honey! Where's my dentures? As you see this whole timer, you can't help but get a bit of like a... Oh. It, I don't know uh, if you want to reveal any of your backstory, but... Uh, basically, you're like, if I had a grandpa, this this, this this is not too far off from what they would be like. Yeah, there's there's a kind of a smile, but a tear that I don't even know that escapes one of my eyes. What's wrong, Sonny? You got like a homesickness to you. Oh, uh, I honestly don't even know where I am. <laughs> Oh, that's a crying shame. I just kind of watched up near your water. They what? I watched up near the water over there. Oh, just past it. He points in the exact direction he came from. That water. Yeah. Right you by got it. 
to be shitting me. Honey! It's a human! It's one of them human motherfuckers! Get a face going! I'm not going to lie to you, sonny. We haven't had one of you humans in this place in 19 million years. It has been a long time. We assumed that humans died. We assumed you were fossilized and shit. Huh? Honey! Get me the scrapbook! You simply must meet my wife. You must stay in town for a feast. We don't have much, thanks to Godryman and those shit bastards. But we will do our best to give you a good feast. And... I am not the wisest sort, but I will counsel you as best I can. Oh, if only great 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 grandpappy Gigi Mom was here for this. <laughs> he loved I, this shit. I don't need a feast, maybe just some bread or some... Honey! Get all the bread you got! Uh. <laughs> as of this moment, I'm gonna say it's, it's very kind and generous to say that uh, this created quite a spectacle. Do you look behind you? I'm gonna do, and if there's a whole bunch of mon there, I'm gonna have a panic attack. There's all the mon. The whole town yeah, is I'm there. Gonna, I'm gonna have a panic attack and fall over. They're all there. They see you fall over. They catch you. And to put it kindly, uh, for a problem, you know this is happening because even though you're out cold, they have not let you remain out cold at all. You can just hear them celebrating the whole time. Like, and more bombardment. <laughs> like, they are all like, it's a human! Woohoo! Some are under an illusion that you're going to save them. Others are, like, trying to calm them down because they see you're panicking. But you can tell that the excitement is kind of drowning out the ones who are kind enough to try and calm everyone down. Then, Gigimon. Gigimon is not helping. At all. If anything, he's probably instigating a good bit. Talking and telling stories of accomplishments of humans countless eons ago have done and the changes that they have wrought. Then, finally, what is, as far as you're concerned, your savior shows up. Granny Mon might as well have shown up with a gat. Like, everyone shut the hell up instantly. Oh, yeah. Basically, Bomb Mon shows up, points her broom in the air, and all of a sudden, crickets. And then you hear it. Scattered like Kakalaka. Gone. Now it is just you. Whether you choose to wake up or not is up to you. But it's just you, Babamon, and Gigimon now. Yeah, I think this is a good time to come to proper consciousness. Yeah. As long as you fade in, you're like... You're probably thinking, Gigimon, God damn you. And honestly, I don't think anyone would blame you if you started like, thank you, Bob Mon, thank you, thank you, thank you, stuff like that. No one would blame you, I don't think, if you started like kissing her foot. She basically gets the same rapid bows that I gave Grandpa. Oh, now ain't you sweet. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, young man. Thank you. Now, I hope you do forgive my husband he is um excitable to put it kindly he means well even if he is an idiot once again you kind of get like this feeling of oh so this is what it's like with the grandma huh she kind of apologizes for his behavior Hand you over some bread. And then she begins to explain 
why, uh, to put it kindly, everyone lost their shit. Uh, they, she tells you about how for at least a couple million years, uh, a group of Goblimon have been harassing this town and taking all of its gold the entire time. And then she says something that kind of was like, ah. She says that they operate in the forest nearby. Hmm. Convenient. Ultimately, she tells you about how their gold has been being stolen, and they've not really stopped. They've been doing it for that long. Every time they make a little money, they have to pretty much almost immediately give it away. Uh, she also tells you that there's not many of them anymore. Uh, they kind of started up their own little town a ways away. And these are kind of like the outpost guys. Uh, she tells you that there's typically only ever about a uh, total of two of them operating at any one given point in time. Uh, she does tell you that there used to be a third. But he got promoted and left. She also tells you that the town has had a bounty on those Goblimon for a long time. But no one's really ever cared to collect because even though there's so much gold there, that gold rightfully belongs to the city so they can only do a certain amount of a payoff for those who would complete the contract. Uh, she does point you to like a billboard that has like uh, bounties, quests, and then as you look over, I would like for you to do a perception check or investigation, whichever you'd rather. We got a seventeen. You can't help but notice that as she's pointing to it, there is a piece of paper. And it does not only corroborate her story, but it's very clearly been ripped off and thrown to the ground. What do you do? As she is, mind you, weeping a little bit about how their town has been ransacked for all these many, many millennia. Alright. <clears throat> I'm going to walk over to the paper that's on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna crunch it in my hand and I'll say well I'm not one to let people get stay getting hurt so I guess I'll help. As you say this, uh, both Baba and Gigi Mon start to weep, saying, Thank you, thank you. Thank you for being so kind and merciful. Because we don't know how much longer we can survive like this. Thank you for your mercy. Um. <clears throat> As she begins to weep, she does give you a warning, though. Being so moved by, you know, your mercy, she, she says, Just a warning, child. The one who should fear out of that entire group is their leader. One of them carries a club. I don't know if you met him. To put it kindly, he's not the brains, nor is he the strength of the operation right now. Because if he was, we would have just gotten our money back eons ago. She warns you that the Gerberimon leading them isn't using a club. What he has is a knife. And at first it doesn't sound like a big deal at first until she tells you that this knife is specifically made out of a metal. And before she can even say what metal it was, you already hear it in your head. 
digizoid a digital metal and cuts off and then says error error information lacking Jima says that Digizoi is not necessarily the most common of metals per se when it comes to use in battle. She does kind of point out how it's a little bit difficult to use at times. Your instinct all of a sudden like roars deep in your gut you can feel just because it is not common does not mean take it lightly we must be cautious <laughs> and then all of a sudden your thoughts are your own again but I will say Gigimon does grab your hand for And says something you probably weren't expecting. Now listen here, Sonny. I know it's difficult. But trust me when I say this. You're not the first of your kind, okay? There have been others before. And they've struggled with the voices too. You'll be okay. Just trust your heart and your instincts. As long as you use that head of yours, right, you'll be fine. Now be careful on your way back. We'll have some bread ready for you. And kind of does a light pat on your back. I just give a single pat. He he smiles and nods. But now, what do you do? I'm gonna do some scouting out of that area in the forest. Alright then. Is there anything specific? I wanna try and spot which ones get left alone. More often than not. You mean for guard purposes or do you mean, um, buildings? The, guard, the guards. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the forest of Goblimon. Uh -huh. So, the one you basically had a boxing match with, you, from what you can tell, is he's the one who was normally left alone. But, you can also, as you're kind of getting like halfway into the forest, you can already hear the leader chewing him out and basically saying from now on, we're guarding this together. The end. What you do notice, though, is their positioning is, is somewhat peculiar. If you would like to know exactly, if you'd like to try and investigate exactly why, roll investigation, obviously. Okay, not too horrible. Let's <laughs> At first, you're you're not sure. You think it maybe it's just that stupid voice trying to be annoying or something. But then you hear it, ting 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 ting, and it catches your eye. You notice that one of the coin piles is not stable at all. Uh, you can tell that it's just because there's just far too much gold to pile on. And more gold has just been piled on over the years without any real care to stability. Now what do you do? Well, me, I had a long range. Something that... I wish I had something like a bow. But... 
And as I'm thinking, <laughs> my un metal hand heats up as we end up with a spitfire and seeing my hand in flame with a small little fireball. I'm surprised. But plan. Shoot it at the unstable pile. Mm -hmm. 120 feet range. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be as far away as I can so that I'm not easily spotted when the fire is off. Alright then. Uh, I am going to have you roll to hit. Very well. Congratulations. Yeah, I wasn't gonna have an image. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Don't you worry about that. Decided. Okay. So, <clears throat> as you hit the pile, you do realize one thing comes of this. While you have definitely hurt a little bit, what you did realize is that the shrapnel blasted in a way that has made pretty much every single gold pile very unstable. Now, there's not many, because too many of the gold piles are farther out, but you can at least tell for sure that the two other piles are definitely unstable. And that they are near enough to the point where if you would like to weaponize them, you could. Do you do so? I'm going to wait just a little bit and see their reaction. And if and I'm gonna hold reaction to if they get close to either of those piles, the last. Uh -huh. <clears throat> um, I will say if you want to weaponize those piles, you do have to move though. I will move to get closer. Would you like to roll stealth so that we don't get seen? Eleven. Uh, so bad news they do notice you to an extent they know something's out here they know you are there they just don't know where there and right. the goblin leader in particular is making it a little annoying because he's like being a salty cocky prick about it well time to begin even bigger deck and climb a tree and they're like, oh look, isn't this adorable? The little pussy is hiding! Ah, oh, it must suck to be so weak and pathetic and unarmed. Ugh, oh, can you imagine? There must be nothing worse than being so, so useless. And he's just going off like that for a good solid chunk of time. Like, he is talented at his talking shit. Now, what are you climbing a tree for? Uh, they might come to my destination. I'm oh, no, they don't know your destination. They just know you're there somewhere. Well, if I'm up in a tree, I'll be harder to climb. So, yeah. So, you're up in a tree... I'm not going to have you necessarily roll for it because these things are, like, pretty easy to get a hold of. A lot of branches. Lots and lots. So many branches. Like, too many even at times. Now, what do you do now that you've arrived above their heads? So, uh, do any of them make their way to one of the piles at all? Um, hmm. Or is that plan a wash? Okay. So, yeah. While the leader himself is, like, close enough that if you, you did some stuff, he, he, could, he could take a little bit. The other one, though, is very close to basically two piles. Let's hit 
food pile. I am going to tell you right now that because you climbed the tree you were up against, you're still not at necessarily a good angle. Because it would go, basically Spitfire would go push the coins the other way. So like, but because you are up the tree, you do see multitudes of branches that basically would get you where you need to go. All right. I imagine that's acro. Yeah. That's a 12. Oh, yeah. I was scared you were going to get a 1 for a second. There's a 20 right beside it. No. Yeah. But anyway, so you managed to get across it fairly smoothly. Nothing goes really wrong. And you managed to not, you know, cause anything to snap or break in a way that would alert them below. Uh, as you get there, you're kind of... You go to the end of the branch and you realize that it... So long as you're you know, press your back up against the tree, you could pop it off. 18 Spitfire, 5 damage to the pile. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm going to now roll the damage. Oof. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, first one's dead. The goblin you just sniped with coins is dead. Now the leader, he himself takes a little damage, but not much. But the first gob, the minion goblin, it he did. Like, dead, dead. That's gonna hurt in the morning. Oh no, there's not gonna be a morning for him. He's dead. Let me let me put it to you like this. You did double his health. Oh my. Yeah, so there's no choice but for him to be dead. <laughs> so, how many do I see out left? Uh, you have just the leader right now. But with so what do they do now that I've done that? Uh, they kind of just look and spit on the dead body, just like you can kind of hear him mutter or something. But without perception check, I, it's not here. It's not heard otherwise. So what uh. do you do? We're going to spit fire the boss and move back a bit. All along the tree line. I got a 19 and a... Ah, oh, come on! Ugh. Yo, I got a 7. Okay. Let's go. And then I move back like 20 feet along the trees. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Hmm. I think this is probably where he knows you're in the trees somewhere. I don't think he would know where in the trees. But he knows you're in the trees somewhere, I think. Yeah. And he's going to start a forest fire. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, so basically what he has done is he has used... I'm going to say you're probably still in line to know that he's done something. How exactly he's done it, probably you don't believe entirely, I'm going to say. Because, you know, how new you are to this whole everything. Yeah, I know how to punch and use a fireball. Um, what you do here is this. Gobbly Blast. When used, throws concentrated physical energy and then it cuts out again info not found the worst encyclopedia ever <laughs> as it hits at first it starts as just an explosion as far as you're concerned but then you notice the fire now ensuing ah uh, shit and it is going your direction 
what chance this ends up affecting the town? Like, is this gonna hit the town? No, it will not hit the town. It will get close enough to the point of where anyone who doesn't realize that there's a bit of a stream in front of it, people are gonna panic blindly at first, and then they're gonna be like, "Oh, stream." I'm gonna have to spend so much time planting. <laughs> Um. Yeah, it's gonna use its second win. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, On an upside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my free actions to be like, you know, at least I'm not as weak as your mother. Okay. You know what? For that, would you like to impose a disadvantage on him healing? Yes. Okay. Good news is he wasn't able to heal five. The suck news is that he only really healed a total of two. Now for that's you, yay for me. That's a yay for you. For him, it's like absolute suckage. But. I will say this, I think this fire has a different problem for you. Yeah. And I'm going to say... Mm, because it's an oasis, I'm going to say probably everything's really dry. So I'm going to say probably in about three, maybe four turns, uh, you're not going to have cover no more. You will not have trees okay. to hide in or above. Just so you have that in mind. What do you do? I'm just going to say just in general to all the goblins here. Are you gonna be cowards? Are you gonna fight me in the fire? There's what only one. Real mons. There's only one. And I'm not sure what role this would be. I feel this is intimidation. Yeah, let's go with that. I got a 20 modified though. Put it kindly, it works. Yo. He, Let's go. he does run into the fire to fight you. Now granted, I will say this much. I don't think he's going to take any damage immediately. Yeah. But, I do think it is fair that he will be taking damage if he touches pretty much anything. That's not you. <laughs> uh, I have cursed his doom. He still can't properly find me. So, at my action? <gasps> um, yeah. Alright. I, I just rolled to see how, um, what he will do. So, in here vision would be obscured, so it's not good for me or him. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, it gets worse. Uh, I rolled for him to charge further out of the fire. That one. Yo. So he's gonna face plant into some fire. Yay! I'm gonna <laughs> say this is probably a D8, I think. Mm. Is that a D8 or D10? Since I'm not sure, I'll just say D8. And we'll see. Unfortunately, he only takes one point of fire damage. But, his clothes are now on fire. <laughs> so now, he's going to be taking fire every turn. He's got the heat metal effect, but for clothes, it's heat clothes. Yes. I cast heat clothes. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to keep it at a D8. Just for simplicity's sake. What do you do? 
besides enjoy the chaos you've wrought. I am going to jump to get a view that has as little smoke as I can within my 30 foot movement. Uh, I'm going to say that would be the ground floor. Uh, I'm going to have to drop down onto his level. You're going to be onto his level, but you'll still be behind a tree, roughly, so. He still technically won't know you're there. And thanks to the face plant and the being on fire, he has smoke blinding him heavily. And can't escape uh, unless he strips. I have a 10 and a 10. <laughs> I probably don't do hit. Actually, you do. Oh my god. Two damage. Okay. I'm going to say that because you're attacking with fire, that's going to trigger the fire clothing right away as well. <laughs> so I am going to roll a d8 to see how much that adds. That adds 6. I'm so glad I rolled that 20. <laughs> so uh, that did a grand total of 8 damage. He is not looking good. He is really looking cooked. Both hyperbole and literally. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, you know, I thought you'd share your mother's fire retardancy. <laughs> I think that just confuses him, like, what? What? Fire what? F fire... Fire retard... What? What? <laughs> <laughs> So Suffice it to say, I think he's very confused. He is going to try. He probably keys into the word fire and the and the R word. Like maybe. It's not that he's dumb. It's just that I'm using words he doesn't know. He you're wor using words that to him, it, it's kind of like someone went and they do a rotary phone joke. Basically, it's like I know what a rotary phone is technically, but what he's led to this? Why? He's speaking Russian, I'm speaking Cantonese. Kind of, yeah. Even though he knows what you're saying, it's like, what? What does that mean? Wait, what? Why? Huh? How is that? What's the relevancy there? Why does my mom flame what tart? Holy shit. Um, so yeah, he's gonna charge out of the fire. He rolled in that 20. Oh no. Uh, I'm gonna say he runs fast enough to put out his clothes. And gets out of the fire and is probably about right next to you, even. Oh no. But he can't attack. He is right next to you, though. Like, five feet. Alright, so. I. I'm really confused and a little scared as the wire on my arm spins up as electricity goes through my hand. I just go and hit him as I utilize my super shocker. Mm -hmm. I got a seven. No! Oh! Miss. Got any bonus actions you want to use? <laughs> if you have any, I don't think you do. I don't oh, expect no. to get bonus action to just punch until later on. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Thankfully, I have AC. Here we go. He's going to try and cut you. Although, as you see this weapon, you all of a sudden hear, Digizoid. Don't let it touch you, stupid. Oh, no. Oh, dear God. Nat 19. 20. Oh, no. <gasps> I mean, thank God it's on that 20. Otherwise, the campaign would be over. I just got told, don't let it touch you, and it touched me. <laughs> yeah. Um... Damn it, Wikipedia! Shut up! <laughs> yeah, that's... in my brain. Quiet, Wikipedia! Okay, good news. For damage, he only rolled a 1. But, he does have a plus 3. So, 4. A plus 3? God damn, it's a plus 3 dagger! That no, no, no. That is His dex is that high. Oh! Oh, yeah. shit! Yeah, uh, by the way... Now that you are in front of him, you hear all of a sudden, Gaburimon are known for being fast and cunning. Not known for their brute strength or for their charm and looks. It is often said that a Gaburimon is borderline, only barely more pleasant to look at than a Numamon. Numamon? 
obviously to to real life, Numamon, ew, quite the insult. Yeah, I'm aware. However, your character knows nothing. Yeah, that's fun. What's Numamon? All you know is that your gut is telling you, because that voice that normally chimes in, the more deep one, oh. is laughing. He's not saying anything, he's just laughing. Ah uh, yes, Google search for Swikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> Very, literally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is their official name when I'm talking about them. I'm just going to tell you right now. Wikipedia. That joke was never noticed when I was writing them out to function like this. <laughs> that never dawned on me. Wikipedia gives me the fucking, like, insights <laughs> on the single mon. Google Google search engine just fucking gives me everything I need to actually know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but anyway, right. it is now your turn. You did take friggin' a grand total of four damage, though. Alright, so... How tall is he compared to me? He is roughly... If I remember correctly, you said your character is four... Feet something, I think. Oh, four eight. Four eight. Yeah, this thing's about, I'd say a solid maybe six inches higher. Oh. I'm gonna super shocker his face. Okay. Woo -hoo! Yes, you do. Ah. Oh. <laughs> One point of damage. Okay. Super shocker his face. He is holding metal though, so. I am going to probably say that does at least an extra, probably D8, sounds fair. Okay, so, let yikes, okay. I, ha I, I had that, I had that thing up and ready. <laughs> so, um, I rolled it myself, we're gonna go with your number. Well, it's bigger, but also because I prefer it that way anyways, and my player's rolling their stuff. Nine damage! So yeah, you do nine damage. And you only needed three or four, roughly. I think I accidentally fry his brain if this kills him. I'm... this... you only needed three or four. Ah. Uh... It isn't double his health, though. No, I'm gonna say it fries him to death, yeah. No, what? No. Alright. Not instantaneously. I'm gonna say it's a lot slower, actually. I'm gonna say he has enough time to basically scream in agony. Master! I'm, I'm sorry! Ash. He has Fire. just enough time. Just enough time to scream that. I'm sorry, Master. Screams that while being thoroughly deep fried. And he is Ash. He is certifiably atomized after that. I just look at my hand, look at the ash. Sorry. Uh, as you say sorry, your breath kind of sends the ashes away. <laughs> I realize there's fire. I need to get buckets and go to the village. Mm. Uh, you get there, and you can kind of see that some of the people are kind of like already on it. Even Babamon and Gigimon <sighs> with their old decrepit asses are kind of, even if it's far less effective as everyone else's, but they are like throwing water onto the fire. Uh, you do see one Digimon in the town you haven't really seen before. And it basically has grabbed basically a bucket and has splashed it from the air. From an entirely different end, causing kind of the air created from putting out that fire over there to shove the fire forwards into the water, basically finishing the job a lot faster. Thankfully, because of your help, though, it still goes even faster still. Basically, the whole thing is put out in about maybe an hour at most. Uh, hopefully. Not too much.
much of the forest has been destroyed? Oh, a lot. Oh, no. But nowhere near as bad as you were afraid of, but still quite a lot. Like, your fear was probably like a 90. Well, this was like maybe a 40 at best. <laughs> now, this Digimon, this one bugs you a little more. Because the info that gets relayed is choppy all of a sudden. Yeah, Mon. Bot. Tight. Debt. Can. And then, like, CRTV static from there on. And this is why I don't trust Wikipedia. You hear in your gut, you must be careful. Whatever that is, something's not right with it. If you decide to talk to it, be careful. What do you do now? I think it's probably a good idea to go back to the forest and because I don't want someone to random to grab that da that dagger. Uh huh. So you go to the forest where the dead body and the ashes were. You do see the dagger, but you notice something's not right with it. You notice that it seemed, to put it kindly, bigger when the goblin mom was holding it. What do you do? I was told not to touch it. So this is a bit of a dilemma, because I also don't think other people should touch it. Mm -hmm. I think I'll grab it with my metal arm. Yeah, sure. Not my fleshy. This is what you want to do? I'm. Oh, I'm getting a DM warning. Oh fuck. No, DM just wants to make it very clear that this is what you're choosing to do. Fucking, I'm breaking the rules. <laughs> I was told not to. I'm breaking the rules. So you're gonna touch it. I'm gonna touch it. Okay. As you touch it, you feel strange. You feel off. Your vision blacks out. Oh, not to save. Oh, shit. You hear it. One. Two. Three. Your eyes open, but you can't tell. The entire... Everything seems black as pitch. Off in the far distance, you see a glowing dot as it grows and grows and grows. Do my bidding. Do as I command. I only take suggestions. You say that, but you can tell that if he heard you, he's clearly not caring. Or is just not willing to respond. 
as you see this giant blood red dot you start to realize it's not a dot you are literally staring at someone's eyeball oh no you can tell that whatever they are they are immense But you can also feel a tug, a pull. Before you can even truly realize it, your entire body is wrested from you. Your arms yanked to the, your side and locked. Huh? I just, just want to say something before we continue. Go. Mormamu, I've come to bargain. <laughs> As you are ripped around as you say that, your arms are locked into place. Your knees lock tight. Your whole body is almost as if in a vice. And what you see is this. You see your body flung fast, rapidly. Within a blink of an eye, you are somewhere you haven't been, but you can see off farther into the distance you see the town that you've just saved and then you are yanked downwards with a violent force stiff as a board and yet you cannot do nothing but just be pulled what you see before you is in a sense a building you feel like you know it, but because of how fast you're yanked through it all the way down, you don't have time to really connect what it is. What you see is a symbol on the ground. The symbol is drawn out in blood. There are countless bodies slashed, hacked, ripped, and torn apart dismemberment, defilement on every corner. And you see a light right at the core. A blinding light. And you hear it. I have found you. I must be rid of you to ensure of it all. you awaken. You're once again back in the oasis. The blade is gone, though. Congratulations, by the way. I'm gonna be honest, I thought you were gonna take my body and kill the people in the village. <laughs> Congratulations, you noticed that on your fleshy hand uh, is a glove. It is a glove with some spikes at the end of it. Right at the knuckles. You can now add to your character a weapon. Knuckle dusters. What these will do is they will basically give you a further plus one to melee attacks done with punching. Oh, so I just added plus one. Is that to hit or damage? Yes. To both. Da -da 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 -da. But you do also know it's already covered in blood. Would you like to go check out the village? Uh, sure. As you arrive in town, you hear crying and mourning. You see sadness, and then you see the people who stare daggers at you. And you see Babamon. 
next to a pyre. Why, Sonny? Why? Why did you do this? Why? Do you look at the pyre? I'll take a look, yeah. You see Jijimon with a hole in his chest. And you see writing carved into his body. The writing is foreign to the Digimon. It's not foreign to you. It's oh, Japanese. Shit. And it says, this is only a fraction of what I can make you do if you do not heed my call. You will go, you will fight, and if it is needed, you will die. All will die. And you also see an object on the ground. You see it, in a sense, lift itself up and shove its way to your side. What do you do? What is it that's on my side? It is a scroll. You feel like it should be familiar, but your memory, your knowledge is a little scrambled. Now what? I'm gonna move just outside the city, probably climb something to just get a view of the pyre just stay there for a bit you find one singular tree just on the outskirt a lone survivor a symbol of tragedy make of it what you will but a singular tree nonetheless but specifically that one tree there right in the picture <laughs> ironically you're not wrong yeah it is a palm tree just sadly it's the only left It's the only palm tree left for quite some distance. As you climb to its top and sit right at the very height of it, you can see the pyre. You can hear the morning still that's happening. What you do see, though, is something at first you don't believe you see at first. You see Gigimon in front of you, floating in the air. You hear him say, Now, now, Sonny. As I've said, this happens. This has happened before. You're not the first. Probably won't be the last. But follow your heart and your instincts. Keep that head on your shoulders. You'll be fine. As he fades away. As he fades away, you hear in your gut, I know it is painful, but I give you my word, he will return in the next life. This is not goodbye forever, but goodbye for now. That you can be sure of, human. And it fades away. What do you do now? I just take a walk out to the desert. Get one last before doing so. I get one last drink of water. As you do so, you notice that the in the distance, just past town. 
there is a structure. You're confident that it's the structure you saw in your head. But you're far enough away that it's still hard to make out what it is or why it's so familiar. You go, you get a drink of water. Suddenly, the water seems to have almost a not as happy inducing of a taste suddenly. Memories, moments seem to dance in the water. Memories of your former life and the scene that was before you. It is now up to you on what comes next. I'm gonna go to that place that was in my head. Whether by mercy, grace of some higher power, or maybe just dumb luck. Thankfully, the entire trip there is just easy, simple, blissful even. Whether or not, though, it is. And honestly, whether that's a good or bad thing is up to you to decide that. But then things go wrong. As you make your way, you see something. You see the forest and the oasis turn to concrete. You see a sign. Do you read it? I do. Alright then. What do you see? A lot of images. <laughs> you may have to cut this part out of the video. Until you get the picture. Oh no, no picture. Oh. It's a sign that basically just reads... Asada Pharmaceuticals. You see walls and a building. You know that building. It shouldn't be here, and you know that. But it's here. Do you go forwards? My uh, arm's gonna spin up. So, <clears throat> massive RPMs, and I'm gonna what? instinctively just plaz with the damn thing. Huh. I'm gonna say you split it in half. But because of that score, I'm gonna say you managed to split it in half, but it still says the name clearly. Still says Asada Pharmaceuticals. It's just now split down the middle, separating the two words. After two, and I walk forward with a bit of determination. You walk forwards. At first, it seems almost as if you're back in Japan suddenly. Typical buildings, but you can't help but now notice that they're more run down than the actual buildings themselves. It's what's off in the distance that really messes with your head. At the end of the concrete you see, and mind you, once you see it, you're like, how did I not realize that's what it was? You see an Egyptian pyramid. But unlike a typical Egyptian pyramid, this one doesn't start up at the top or have a. It has a doorway right at the bottom. Right with ground level. 
The doorway is ornate, embellished and embroidered. Gold hues here, silver bullions here, gems here, stuff here. Silk drapery even, like the thing's excessively lavish to the point of almost comical. And then you feel a tightening in your chest. You know where to go. Bottom of the pyramid. I'm going to slowly make my way in. As you slowly make your way in, at first it's nothing seems to be going wrong. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. Turn excessively gold, ruby, and diamond encrusted platinum handle. Probably poke some fun at it because it looks ugly as hell. But you go in and you realize apparently all the budget was on the door. All the budget was on the door. There's no decorations, there's not even an area rug in this hallway. That you find yourself in. But you do hear a voice from deep below. Ah, so you have arrived. Come to me and let us end this dance forevermore. As you hear that, you hear from deep within you don't go yet. Not yet. Head to the top first. head there. Trust me. You know, I keep getting bark and orders, but I haven't given, got given one damn reason as to why I should listen to anyone. You say that, but you can kind of get the feeling that whereas the voice from deep below the pyramid says nothing, the voice within you simply says, That's a fair point. However, try to remember that I am a part of you. I benefit not from deceiving you or sending you to your death. like to do. I'm gonna trust Google. Okay. As you're making your way up, you notice that there's nothing. No traps. No enemies. When you do arrive, you find a room. It is... I wouldn't say lavish or necessarily plush, but it is comfy and you can also very easily tell that it is safe. It has what looks like a very comfy almost almost Saudi Arabian like pillows made up into a bed. It also has a view. Eat your heart out any freaking image. This thing has such a beautiful 360 view stretching out for what seems like miles of vistas. I.e. the picture that's on the very video recording. <gasps> Yay. You have that facing out towards the city for a view. If you look the exact opposite direction, you see what looks like 
uh, almost kind of like a imagine like almost like multitudes of islands and beautiful oceans separating the islands almost like Hawaii basically where you can look out and you can see tons of islands dotting each other ah uh, yes the Cayman Islands <laughs> yeah exactly and then off in to a different side there's what looks like uh, a mixture of mountains and almost craggy almost kind of like um uh almost like the grand canyon almost skin view almost as if you're staring down the grand canyon from a high view within the grand canyon and then in the other direction you almost see what looks like tons of open skies and even some islands within those skies ah I could make a very salty joke uh, directed at Tears of the Kingdom, but I won't. Ultimately, it has this beautiful, these beautiful, four b different beautiful views, but also it has animals and creatures making noises coming from all ends, birds chirping, frogs ribbiting, and depending on which direction, you'll hear different sounds even. Face towards the sky, the sky terrain, you can hear birds and masks, tons of different kinds, all of them having this very beautiful song to sing. Towards the oasis, you hear stuff like rushing waters, the common folk doing what common folk do, especially when in mourning. Off to the, the almost canyon, you hear sounds of of different types of animals. I'm not going to say zebras because yeah, that's not a good example. But kind of along that line. And then when you stare out towards the others, you just. Every single direction has different, almost beautiful sounds to them. And in your gut, you can feel like you can rest here. Here you feel, in a sense, a moment of reprieve. What do you do? I'm just gonna look around the area and see why I was told to come up here. Because a view clearly isn't the only reason. I'm going to have you do an investigation roll and a perception roll. Ouch. <laughs> nope, that's persuasion. My bad. Uh, there ooh, we go. Okay, yeah. Alright, so perception wise. I persuade the window to let me. <laughs> <laughs> so, investigation wise, you don't really find a ton. But then you realize what at least half the reason was, you think. But you can tell that what's clearly wanted is for you to rest. Clearly, it wants you to rest, as if preparing you for something big. Now, do you is the big question. I'll take some time looking at the village in the partially burned forest. Now, relent uh, words or things, I guess. Uh, regretting picking up the blade at all. And I go to bed full of various emotions. You lay on the bed and it almost seems to cradle you. Comfort you even. And you fall asleep. But your sleep is not your own. As you slumber you see yourself. 
you see what you have become. It's good to see you are well, despite everything. But at least now, proper introductions can be made. I am you, and you are me. What we are called is Plasma. And the, um, <clears throat> how did you describe it? Ah, yes, the Wikipedia voice you heard. Technically speaking, that is your, the voice of your Digivice. Normally, your Digivice would be outside of you. In a different capacity, normally. In your case, the Digivice is attached to your skull in that third eye of yours. Which is, might I add, not normal. To put it kindly. Now, normally she's not this bad, I swear. Normally. But she's become... I'm going to be kind and say unreliable. She can give you information about the lore of things, but the more practical things, not so much. I am going to warn you. What you are going to fight is going to throw you for a little bit of a loop, based off of your human stories and mythologies. Here in the digital world, that's the place you are in now. Here, light and dark aren't so clear-cut. Even by humans, gray standards. Here, especially, light and dark is... odd. <laughs> well, I mean, I am quite literally you. And you are quite literally I. So, truly, no, we are not so different. <laughs> uh, ultimately, please do remember this. The creature that made you kill Chichimon, none of that is truly your fault. Truth is, is the reason that happened is because that vindictive bastard wants to ensure you and I are as tightly wound on his pinky as we can be. In fact, if he has his way, we'll be about as tightly wound as a private used toy, if you catch my drift. Ultimately, whether we side with him or against him is not important to me. What is ultimately important to me is that you and I make it out of this nightmare alive. We facts are as we need each other, for we are each other. But more than anything, I am your partner in this. And for that, I do rely on you the way you are going to have to rely on me. <clears throat> I 